Curious what it's like to live in Santa Clara? Santa Clara is the center of Silicon Valley and has a lot to offer its residents. Schools, parks, convenience, you name it, Santa Clara has it. Before you jump right in there, there are a couple things you should know before you buy a home in Santa Clara. Hi, I'm Vinicius Brazil, the Santa Clara Real Estate Guy. I specialize in Santa Clara Real Estate, the city I grew up in. If this is the first time on my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Today, I wanna to go over some of the pros and cons of living in Santa Clara. Now, there's a lot to consider when you're looking for a place to live. There's schools, shopping, housing, and convenience, as well as other factors that are generally important to someone looking to live and invest in a community. So let's jump right into it. One of the great things about Santa Clara's housing is its diversity. There's homes dating back to the late 1800s and early 1900s, including a few estate type mansions, as well as homes built in the last 20 years and everything in between. One important thing to understand about Santa Clara housing is a vast majority is made up of post-war ranch style homes. These are homes that are built in the 1950s and 1960s that are typically referred to as tract homes. Most of these homes are built in the ranch style with a few mid-century modern style homes here and there. Although there are a variety of homes built in different time periods, you're not gonna find many new single family homes and unfortunately not many large homes. An average Santa Clara home is a three bedroom, two bath home around 1,200 to 1,400 square feet, has a two car garage and sits on about a 5,000 to 6,000 square foot lot. Finding a large home can be a bit of a challenge. Many 2,000 square foot homes are homes that have been expanded and some have been expanded better than others. If you're looking for a 3,000 square foot home or larger, you may have a difficult time finding one in Santa Clara. You are probably already aware of this, but one of the major drawbacks of living in the Bay Area is housing prices. Housing in the Bay Area is expensive and Santa Clara is no exception. I won't go into specifics here on pricing because it seems like pricing is always changing. Here are some home value ranges of what to expect for Santa Clara homes. If you need specifics on housing prices in Santa Clara or the Bay Area, I provide some links down below to our website where you can access information on the Santa Clara real estate market and home values. Relative to some of the surrounding communities to the west, homes in Santa Clara are more affordable than cities like Sunnyvale, Cupertino, Mountain View, and much more affordable than Palo Alto or Los Altos. There are some parts of North Sunnyvale along 101 that may not be as expensive, but for the most part, you'll get more for your money in Santa Clara. To the south of Santa Clara is West San Jose and the city of Campbell. And although close in price, Santa Clara has slightly higher costs per square foot than these areas. To the east and northeast of Santa Clara is Central and North San Jose. Also the city of Milpitas is nearby. These areas are typically more affordable than Santa Clara and offer a broader selection of newer homes built in the 1970s and 80s. Keep in mind, the general trend is as you move more northwest up the peninsula, real estate gets pricier and older. As you move down the peninsula to Santa Clara Valley and San Jose, homes are less costly and a bit newer. One thing to note about Santa Clara housing is that Santa Clara consists of three distinct zip codes, 95051, 95050, and 95054. Each zip code has its unique advantages and disadvantages when it comes to housing. 
Most of the top neighborhoods in Santa Clara are going to be located in 95051 zip code, located in the southern part of the city along Prune Ridge Avenue. Neighborhoods like Laurel Park, Forest Park, Westwood Oaks, and Killarney Farms are located in this area. But you'll find pockets of great homes and neighborhoods throughout Santa Clara. One of the unique developments that contains newer contemporary homes is the Rivermark community developed in the north part of the city. This area features contemporary housing developed in the early 2000s and has close proximity to jobs as well as some great schools. The cons of this area are the surrounding area is not as consistent in its makeup. There is a mixture of housing, commercial and industrial property in that northern Santa Clara zone. Rivermark is also in close proximity to the San Jose Airport and is directly under the flight path. So airplane noise is very prevalent in that area. However, if you fly, this could be a pro. Lastly, this could either be a pro or a con depending on how you view it. In the last 15 years, there's been lots of developments of newer condo and townhome communities. So there's a good amount of contemporary townhomes and condos available. Commute. Now this depends on who you ask, but I think this is a pro. The Silicon Valley is a pretty congested area. Also the best and most desirable tech jobs are typically close to Palo Alto and up the peninsula. Companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, as well as Apple are located up the peninsula or the western side of the valley. So if you happen to work for one of these companies or in that region, the farther you are to Palo Alto, the more challenging you'll find it is getting to work. Geographically, Santa Clara straddles both Highway 101 and 280, which lead up the peninsula through Palo Alto, and there's also Central Expressway as well, which to me is a pro. Another pro is Santa Clara has a train station, as well as a train stop that can take you all the way up the peninsula as far as San Francisco. If you prefer public transportation, this is a great alternative. Santa Clara is fairly central in the valley and there are lots of great companies located right here, such as NVIDIA, Intel, Applied Materials, and ServiceNow, just to name a few. And some are right on the border like Apple, Intuitive Surgical, and LinkedIn. Living in Santa Clara will generally mean a better and easier commute to jobs up the peninsula than San Jose or Campbell or any community to the south or east. Schools. This is very subjective, but again, I feel this is another pro for Santa Clara. The Santa Clara Unified School District doesn't have a reputation for high performing academics like Palo Alto Unified and the Cupertino Unified School District. One of the pros of Santa Clara schools is that they are generally in good proximity to the homes inside their enrollment boundaries, so you don't have to drive very far to get your child to school. The school district consists of 18 elementary schools, five middle schools, and three high schools. This includes some of the schools that are currently in production, such as Agnew Elementary, Puerto Middle School, and McDonald High School. There are two open enrollment schools, Washington Open and Millican Basics, meaning they don't take enrollment from any boundaries within the district, but parents must apply. Both schools are highly rated and sought after and have very different educational philosophies. One of the unique and little known facts about the Santa Clara School District is that the district is one of the few districts in the entire state that is considered basic aid. Basic aid districts are funded locally through taxes and don't get money from the state. This allows Santa Clara Unified to offer more competitive salaries to their teachers and staff and offer additional educational programs. Also worth mentioning here is that there's a small part of Santa Clara on the southern part of the city, mainly homes south of Prune Ridge Avenue that are part of the Cupertino or Campbell School Districts. In addition to public schools, there are a number of private schools and academies located in Santa Clara and the surrounding area.
Let's talk amenities. Santa Clara has everything you need close by. There's a Target, a Costco, several grocery stores such as Safeway, Whole Foods, and Knob Hill to name a few, as well as a number of ethnic supermarkets serving our Chinese, Indian, and Korean populations. The only thing Santa Clara is missing is a Trader Joe's. This is definitely a con if you're like me and you love Trader Joe's. Part of Westfield Valley Fair, the area's largest retail mall, is in Santa Clara. And of course, the trendiest shopping in the valley, Santana Row, lies just outside of Santa Clara's borders. And I have to mention the historic El Camino. This is the main boulevard that cuts through all of Santa Clara. It's a patchwork of large and small strip malls, some good and some not so good. Here you'll find your typical mom and pop type of establishments, as well as national chains that you see in most cities. In recent years, there's been several new dense housing developments along the El Camino, and the city has invested in beautifying this historic road. To the west, bordering Sunnyvale on the El Camino, there's the Korean Business District, or Koreatown. By the way, if you really want a scenic tour of the peninsula, you can drive the El Camino all the way to San Francisco. Ask my assistant, Neil. He's done it. Lastly, for those of you interested in the north side of the city, there's a new mixed-use development that is currently in planning, which will be developed in the old Santa Clara Municipal Golf Course. It's slated to be the largest development ever in Santa Clara's history. Restaurants. This is definitely a pro. Santa Clara, like much of the Bay Area, is a melting pot of cultures and nationalities you'll find cuisines from all over the world. Santa Clara is no exception. Besides your typical Italian, Mexican, and Chinese, you'll find a number of Korean, Thai, various Indian cuisines from all over India. There's also Afghani, Pakistani, Mediterranean cuisine from Greece, and various Arab and Middle Eastern countries. And who could forget the Portuguese bakery? You can enjoy tacos, dosas, shawamas, falafels, samosas, queijadas, pretty much any food that you can imagine, you'll find it right here in Santa Clara. The downtown. Many people will remark that Santa Clara doesn't have a downtown. Santa Clara's downtown is actually located in the old quad area of the city near the university. Unfortunately, the original downtown was destroyed during urban renewal in the 1960s. I've got a great video on downtown Santa Clara's history. If you're curious and want to learn more about the history of downtown, the link will be right here. Unfortunately, when downtown was redeveloped, it lost all of its original character. Currently, the downtown mainly consists of Franklin Mall, which is like a town and country style shopping center, and University Plaza. There are still some cool shops, cafes, and great restaurants and pubs located in downtown, but it's not what you would expect from a downtown. I want to point out that there's currently a movement to revitalize Santa Clara's downtown, and there's likely to be some big changes in downtown Santa Clara's future. Parks. This is a huge pro. There are close to 40 parks in the city of Santa Clara. Santa Clara probably has more parks per capita than any other city in Santa Clara County. The city has Central Park, where the annual Art and Wine Festival is held. There's a community garden, a skate park, which is located right next to the Youth Activity Center, a sports park, a number of dog parks, as well as lighted basketball and tennis courts, and several community pools, including the famous International Swim Center. There are neighborhood parks all over the city featuring upgraded playgrounds, bathroom facilities, and fields for the residents to enjoy. The city also has the Ulistak Natural Area, which technically is not a park, but a great open area with space to walk and see local wildlife and natural Bay Area plant life. There have been sightings of coyotes and beavers in the Ulistak, and of course, it's a great place for bird watching. I have a great video on Ulistak if you would like to learn more about this unique Santa Clara gem. 
Libraries. This is another big pro. Santa Clara has three libraries. There's the Central Park Library, which is the largest and is located right next to Central Park. And then there's the city's newest library, the Northside Library, which is walking distance to Rivermark and Rivermark Plaza. These libraries are state-of-the-art and provide a number of services to the community. Neighborhoods. This is both a pro and a con. There's lots of different areas and neighborhoods in Santa Clara. Many are old established neighborhoods with an aging population, but also a growing population of young tech workers and families moving into the area. There are some neighborhoods like Rivermark and the Old Quad that have very active resident associations. But for the most part, many of Santa Clara neighborhoods are not very active. Here are a few Santa Clara neighborhoods or communities to consider if you're thinking of moving to Santa Clara. If you have a question about a specific Santa Clara neighborhood, please message me or leave a comment below. Here's a list of a few more pros of why living in Santa Clara is the best decision you can make. Utilities, pro. Santa Clara has its own private power company, Silicon Valley Power, which produces electricity for all of its residents. The cost is lower and is more reliable than PG&E, California's energy monopoly. Travel. Santa Clara is pretty central and is in close proximity to San Jose International Airport, SFO, and Oakland International Airports. Other pros, Levi Stadium, where you can catch NFL football games and other sporting events and concerts. There's the Senior Center, which is free to all our resident seniors and features an indoor pool, gym, and exercise classes. Santa Clara University, which is California's oldest higher education institution, you can enjoy nice evening walks through the beautiful campus and visit Mission Santa Clara. The San Tomas Creek Trail is a paved trail for walking, running, or riding your bicycle, and it leads all the way to the bay. There's the Carmelite Monastery, which is just a very cool place to walk around and explore. A little history for some of you history buffs, the opening of Jack London's Call of the Wild was written and is based on the ranch that was located on this property. If you like amusement parks, there's California's Great America, the top amusement park attraction in the Bay Area. The city hosts a number of events each year, such as Santa Clara Parade of Champions, the Santa Clara Art and Wine Festival, the Winter Ice Rink and Christmas Tree Lighting, as well as the 4th of July park celebration and fireworks. The city also provides some valuable services, such as the yearly cleanup, where once a year you can put out and discard your unwanted items on your curb, and the city street department will pick them up. You can enjoy slightly lower property taxes than San Jose, and there is no city transfer tax when you buy or sell a home in Santa Clara. So cons, well, unfortunately there is no downtown as of yet. Also, there's not many options for newer single family homes and large spacious housing. Poor planning in the city in the past has made Santa Clara somewhat spotty. One could say that the city lacks consistency. Besides the San Tomas Creek Trail, there are not a lot of biking or hiking trails in Santa Clara. Santa Clara is fairly suburban and it's located in the low part of the valley and is fairly flat. There are some FEMA designated flood zones in Santa Clara that will require you to carry flood insurance. If you like to golf, there are no major golf courses in Santa Clara. Santa Clara had a great 18 hole municipal golf course, but it has been closed down for several years and will be the location of a future mixed use housing development. Currently, Santa Clara does have a great nine-hole golf course with a driving range, the Prumridge Golf Club. As you can see, there's a lot going on in Santa Clara, and depending on how you look at it, Santa Clara may or may not be the right place for you and your family. If you're considering a move to Santa Clara or anywhere in Santa Clara County, 
I'd love to be a great resource for you and help you learn more about the area. To contact me, you can call me directly or send me a message. Hey, thanks again for watching my video. If you found this helpful, please make sure to like it. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified for any of our future videos. Be sure to leave your questions and comments below in the comments area. Interested in all things Santa Clara? Like our Santa Clara Living Facebook page to stay on top of events, great recommendations on restaurants, cafes, and pubs. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you around Santa Clara.